I've made a video game. I entered the completion jam, an event that's all about finishing a game. Finishing a game can be difficult, but I'm sure it's much easier if you decide to switch to a completely new game engine and try and make something polished and complete in 72 hours, right? Right? Let's talk game design. Regular viewers of the channel will know that I exclusively use ClickTeam Fusion 2.5 to make games. Regular viewers will also know that I would generally describe Fusion as being held together with duct tape and chewing gum, or something equally as witty and scathing. I've stuck with Fusion for the same reason people stay married for 50 years despite hating each other. Familiarity. I've been toying with the idea of learning something else for a while, but moving to Unity or Godot would require me to learn at least some kind of programming and again, regular viewers of the channel will know that I am incredibly lazy. Construct, however, has basically the same event-driven scripting methods as Fusion, so it's always been at the top of the list for a prospective move. The problem was that a proper, fully-fledged version costs something like £90 a year, and ordinarily that puts me off. If I wanted to spend obscene amounts of money on something I might be terrible at, I'd pay for a university degree in makeup design. You know when you're drunk, and you're on Amazon, and then a day later you're getting a package full of octopus plushies with happy and angry faces on, and you don't remember ordering them? Imagine that, but instead of being drunk you're sleep deprived and instead of shopping on Amazon, you're buying a year's subscription to Construct 3. That's what happened. Plus it was Christmas, so I guess I can justify it as a gift to myself. The Completion Jam is run by Danum Studio, a YouTuber who, I'm sure he wouldn't mind me saying, has historically had difficulties reaching the end of a project. I bring this up not to dunk on him, but because admirably, he decided to focus his first hosted game jammer around the idea of actually finishing a thing. It's a nice touch since it makes it personal to his experiences, and it's a bit like if I made a game jam focused on sarcasm and disappointing your parents. Very quickly, for anyone not aware, a game jam is a timed event where multiple people make a game in a set time period around a specific theme. This one was 72 hours long, and our theme for the jam was out of place, which sent me down a rabbit hole of idea generation. My first thought was to make something about having OCD, but I immediately discarded that because it seemed needlessly cruel and probably quite offensive, so best not to really. Then I thought about boxes. There's an entire sub-genre of puzzle game where you just push boxes around, usually named after the first release of its type, Sokoban. Even if you're not familiar with the name, you've probably played some variant of it, like that bit in Pokemon where you're pushing rocks around, or 2019's deviously mind-breaking Baba Is You. If you think about it, the boxes have a place they're meant to be in, so if you're pushing them around, then they're out of place. Boom. Sorted. We're moving boxes. And when you're thinking about moving boxes, there's only one game that comes to mind. Shenmue. Do you know any places where sailors like to hang out around here? Specifically that bit where you're moving boxes around on a forklift truck in some warehouses. And then I thought, what could make both Shenmue and Baba Is You more fun and enjoyable? And the answer was, of course, immediately obvious. Physics and guns. In the immortal words of popular Minecraft speedrunner Danny, Physics make me go yes. There's a style of indie game that can best be described as perfectly normal thing made incredibly hard because of physics, which includes things like Surgeon Simulator, where you're struggling to move your hand with 96 different buttons, Quop, where you're struggling to move your entire body with 217 different buttons, and Octodad, where you're facing the hardest struggle of all, being a good dad, with many buttons. Now, I'm not adding many buttons, but I can take something as simple as pushing a box and turn it into something slightly more complicated and difficult with the introduction of physics. As it turns out, this is really easy in Construct 3 because although Fusion uses the same box 2D physics engine, Fusion is also designed and coded by an infinite team of monkeys using an infinite supply of MacBooks, so it isn't exactly intuitive. Not like Construct, which is easy. So that's the physics sorted, what about the guns? What's the best arcade game ever made? No, you're wrong, it's Smash TV. I'd buy that for a dollar! Alright fine, there are other options, but Smash TV is brilliant. A top-down shooter with lots of bullets and manic running around and stuff exploding. Which is just what we need in a thoughtful game about boxes. So we're ripping that off. And that brings us to a teachable moment. If you're stuck for ideas, try blending together different existing genres or mashing up two or more games you like and see what happens. How does the focus and intent change with different mechanics? Is there something new there? Try it out, you might surprise yourself. So we've got our primary gameplay loop taking boxes that are out of place and shooting them back into place with physics. What we're going to do now is run through some specific design considerations I made while blending this all together, because this is a channel about game design and I wouldn't want you to feel shortchanged. In order to differentiate which boxes go where, 
I color coded them using the old standard red, green and blue theme. This presents an issue for a sizeable chunk of the population who are colorblind, and you can't necessarily tell red from green. Historically, I've been really bad for this sort of thing. If you're not colorblind, red contrasts really nicely with green and I've leaned on that pretty hard, so I thought this time I'd fix it. The boxes all have a letter on corresponding to their color, and the bays that they need putting into all have signs that point out which ones go where. Now I don't personally know any colorblind people, so if you're one of them, can you please let me know if this is of any use to you? As you're looking through the footage, you might notice that you can't die in the game. This is intentional. To discuss why, we need to talk about something called a failure state. This won't take much explaining because you're all very intelligent, brilliant, and frankly beautiful people. Please subscribe to my channel. But in essence, a failure state is how you fail. Think falling down a pit in Super Mario or getting shot to pieces in Smash TV. So what's the failure state of Baba is You? Because you can't die and the game doesn't force you to stop playing it. You fail at Baba is You when you give up because you can't figure out the puzzle. It's a similar story in Quap. You fail when you stop playing because the game has annoyed you so much that you can't be bothered anymore. You know, like in life. Everything in this game is designed to annoy you. You move a little bit too fast and with a little bit too much momentum, which at first makes it hard to control. There are two types of enemies, a robot named Robert and a bouncy ball thing. Neither of these can kill you, but they can push you back and more importantly, also push the boxes. The robot can walk through walls by design. The reason for this is that the level exit is only active when all the boxes are in their respective bays and being able to walk through walls lets the robot, which is always slowly walking towards you, push boxes out of the gap that you've put them in. Then there's conveyor belts, which will yeet your boxes all over the place and smaller grey crates that exist for no reason other than to get in your way. You know, like most people. This is all incredibly frustrating, which is brilliant because that's what I wanted. Now, some game jams are ranked at the end after a voting and judging period, and I can already tell you that making my game this annoying means I'm most likely not going to be placing too high up in those overall scores. But like the bard William Shakespeare himself once said, I'd much rather annoy people than have them like me because it's funny, probably. Playing around with Construct 3 has opened up a whole new world of visual effects. I can add scan lines and a noise filter with a single option, and make text scroll across the screen with a single behaviour. It's magical really, and it's a far cry from fusion systems where you need to sacrifice a goat to a god of your choice to get the title screen to work properly. A strong consideration in any game you make should be the visual aesthetic. This isn't necessarily graphical quality because as we all know I don't have any of that, but includes things like art direction and visual consistency. Because I've got shiny new toys to play with, I wanted an excuse to put them in a game, so I've set up the entire presentation of the game as if you're a mysterious company executive watching the action unfold through the warehouse's CCTV system. This is all explained in an email after the title screen and is neatly capped off in an ending once you complete the game. And because the email is designed to look like it's on an old green monochrome monitor, anything that didn't need to be a specific colour for gameplay purposes is now some shade of green. Side note, green is actually my favourite colour. Random little fact about me there, I suppose. I'm glad we're getting to know each other better. Please put your favourite colour in the comments. That says Polish, by the way, I'm not putting the entire population of Poland in my game. Well, not today, anyway. The game came out surprisingly polished with, even more surprisingly, very little effort. The sprites all rotate automatically, there's liberal use of particles, and there's even screen shake. I'd love to tell you that I had some hand in making this happen, but the truth is that spending a few days working on Construct 3, the engine did it all for me. I've even got exported versions for Windows, Mac, and Linux, in addition to the main HTML5 version you can play in your browser. And all of that was one menu button. So the game came out, and I'm very pleased with it. It's not often that I recommend you go and play my Game Jam games because they're usually a rough, unpolished mess. But I think this one's actually pretty good, so check the description if you'd like to give it a go. I'm also very impressed with Construct 3, which, as a result of the countless hours I've wasted in Fusion, I managed to get a pretty good grip on in just three days. Going forward, I'll probably make most of my Game Jam and experimental games in Construct, and maybe one day I'll have the time available to create something a bit bigger and more substantial. If you've liked this video, then please like this video and consider subscribing if you'd like to see more of me waffling about nonsense. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you the next time I'm thinking, hey, let's talk game design.